say Hamrakumurado, Kime Gustalo Mikur, Ars no Munya me fant and yem me daddy mebur. Kimo blang go central, Allah so yos no mevur. Alla say yes in a luna yes me disalo maker. I I I I I remember. I me more than I demigrasm. I I I I I remember. I me more than I demigrasm. Me gusta tocar la guitarra, me gusta can canción. Mariachi me acompaña cuando canto mi canción. Me gusta crema mis copas, aguanto los dos me cor. Sabe lente que la blanco luego sale por sabor. Ay 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 ay, I remember. Ay mi amor en nada en mi corazón. Ay 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 ay, I remember. Ay mi amor en nada en mi corazón. La 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 And that is John Bettel. He's 20 years old and is a student of University of Nigeria and Sokavera I Studied for a beat and ran away. <laughs> uh, currently, I live in Puebla, Mexico. I'm teaching English in Mexico and trying to learn Spanish. I've been teaching for four years free of charge all over the world. I had dinner with some few writers recently because I'm also a writer, but I failed one. So I had dinner with these writers, and they said, Onyeka, please tell us the truth. How can you say you're a professor? You don't have a PhD. I said, please, does Shoyinka have one, if not honorary doctorate? Does Flora Wampa have any? Elicha Mati, does he have? You know, we have a lot of educated illiterates in Nigeria. And these people masquerade as writers. I have not come here to spite them. But this is what I did. I moved far away to North America. And yet one of them came on my Facebook and said, what are you doing in South America? Mexico is in North America, not in South America. A writer who claims to be a pioneer of African culture does not know the geography of the world. <laughs> I, I was at an academic conference in India on post-colonial literature. So everybody was there speaking. Grammar. I came, there, I came there to tell them my life story. I was born in a village in Imo State, and I lived in that village all my life. I read Igbo very well. I, I write Igbo very well. There was a time I was updating my Facebook post in Igbo. People got mad. I said, Nkaha Basaron, Makahem Chorida Kam Kwachrid. I'm unapologetic if you don't get what I said, but what can we do? French people do the same. <laughs> For this sole reason of being born in the village, I was very privileged because of my family. So I went to the most expensive, or, uh, I mean, schools in Imo State. I was in boarding house, my father was coming every day and buying, because he was, he's a chieftain of PDP, so he had money to send me to somewhere and other, my siblings. We are six, one girl, five, five boys. So, I was also opportunity to go to the University of Nigeria, and Soka. But how I got into that university was a miracle. Only Jesus Christ knows. <laughs> my aunt, was a minister then, so she called the vice chancellor on the phone and said, my nephew has to be in your school. She called me and said, where do you want to go, UI or UNN? 
They said UNN because I didn't want to go and struggle with Yoruba language. Or <laughs> Nani So I got into UNN on the VCs list. And I had, my uncle is a professor there. So he gave me his BQ. So my life started with free stuff. Just like Kiki was talking about people giving you stuff. I'm the most, I think I'm the luckiest child in Nigeria. Because everything I have, even my camera, my glasses, they're all free. My perfume is free too. No, I'm not kidding, for real. I've lived this life of people offering to, and some of them are in this hall, actually. They, I'll, I'll go, uh, I'll mention their names, uh, for real. Uh, there, there is something I did when I ran away from UNN, and I ran away because of a lecturer who's, who was abusing me verbally. Also, I wanted to run away, Cha, because, <laughs> because the teaching methodology, the teaching met methodology was very, very boring. This lecturer, her name is Dr. Ezekwes. UNN students are here, they know her, GS101. So she will come, she will be walking like this, like she's pregnant. And you know why I like to mention them, so that you don't think I'm lying. So she will come and walk up, and I'm not trying to spite her as well, but she's the reason why I left, so I need to tell her the truth. She will walk up and then abuse people. Oh, you know my child is doing this thing in this foreign university, why are you telling us? We are here, you're teaching us here, and you're telling us rubbish. And you're actually teaching from a textbook that we have. So what is the essence of you calling yourself a teacher when you can't teach from your heart? You need to teach what you know. And this is why I found the question the writers asked me very ridiculous. Because I'm teaching African studies. I've traveled to 45 countries at the age of 27. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very arrogant, but this is what I learned as a child. Pride and honesty can only take you to where you want to go to. I've been privileged, very, very privileged, not by any connections from any family, but still, there is a way you can ride on the glory of your background. I'm related to Charlie Boy. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. <laughs> My mother is from Muguta. And she's second cousin to Flora Wampa, Africa's first female writer. And Charlie Boy is first cousin to Flora Wampa. So now, when I want to go and meet a big man, I just start throwing out names. You know, I have to show off. Makanonya Muriki Chupomna, say, when Honya Ama. But this is the thing. I was appointed visiting lecturer of African studies at the University of Hong Kong when the guy who was teaching them African studies, and a South African guy ran away because he said they couldn't pay him $100,000. I say, you won your $100,000 to teach somebody. Do you know why I asked John Better to come on stage? He's actually teaching some musicians in Nigeria, because these guys who play back on CDs, they, they depress me. So he's teaching some Nigerian musicians how to play guitar, but he taught himself how to play the guitar. Please clap for him. So we are combining forces. There is another guy, Afam Doze Kings. He's a mechanic. We used to live together in India. You know? And he came back to Nigeria. He wrote a book on how to be a good mechanic. And uh, he tried going to University of Nigeria because anything I want to do, I always want to go to University of Nigeria and Soka because I want to shame some lecturers there. God, <laughs> they kill me. So he went there to talk to the mechanical engineering students. Some of them don't even know how to touch a car. You know. UNM will make your life miserable if you don't take your time. Like, if you're not in fine arts, theater arts, or something that is very practical, you are useless. Very useless. So he gave out these books free. He's teaching people. You see Afam in Casey's video. Afam is a mechanic, but his best or closest friends are celebrities. He's the one taking care of the cars. 
He does that free for them. He's building a relationship. In English language, you say it's social capitalism. And that's what I've learned. I don't go to anybody's house without a bottle of wine. Never. Always, Jean, come down. And that is a way to build a relationship with people. They, they look at the bottle you've brought. They remember you. They call your number. But some people will come to me and say, can you know I'm going? How can I give you water to drink when you came to my house empty-handed? Iwonyara. <laughs> well, anyway, that's the only question I have to ask, Iwonyara. <laughs> so I was invited to Hong Kong to teach replacing the guy who asked for $100,000. I have the videos from my classes on YouTube. I was talking to my age mates, and I felt really good because I was talking about things they didn't know, but they didn't, they didn't need to know about it. And there are also things they know that I don't know, and I want to learn from them. But at the end of the day, everybody wants money. We know money is very important, but we can't stop chasing money. The more you chase money, the more it keeps running. That is why our rich men are still running, waking up every morning to work, because you can never be satisfied with the, the one you have. But what is the legacy you are leaving behind when you die? The story of Charlie Boy would be a folklore. The story of Darren Lee would be a folklore. What do I want to do with my own life? Impress people, depress myself, mess my life all because the society wants me to be the way that I am? 2011, I was working at the African Movie Academy Awards for three years, sleeping on the floor because I wanted to build a relationship with the founder. And you know what happened? There was no contract. I didn't go with AMA. I was flying in business class, but I never received the salary. The one that was better for me was AMA. It made my life so glorious. Everybody thought I was so rich. You know what? That added to the value in the market because then everyone took me serious. My company was featured on MTV Base. Uh, we were selected to interview Ben Bruce for MTV Miss MTN. And that was simply because we were pushing too hard. Currently, I'm, I'm surprised that people still believe that ed university education is not the loudest scam in the world. If you have something someone else doesn't have, there is what we call trade by butter. You can't teach the person and take from the person. And that's what I feel we should do with education. If you know how to make key soap, teach the other guy how to make locks. and let him teach you. <sighs> I want to make, also make a confession, which I came up here to do. I owe a lot of people money. <laughs> and I think it's possible some of them came with police today, because, <laughs> yeah, but, I'm sure you guys won't let them take me away. <laughs> I owe the money. I have borrowed a lot of money from people. And I borrowed this money to fly. Because I would have made arrangements with the university to come and teach free. And when you say you're free to university, oh, come, 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 come. Yeah, our department is even open right now. You have to come. But I'm not going because of the university. I'm going to, to build a relationship with the people, the students. So, but I want to thank Peace Anya Musigwe, founder of Africa Movie Academy Awards. <laughs> Peace gave me life. I mean it. She's not here, but I mean everything I say. She gave me life. She, made my, she did what my parents couldn't do for me. And there is Blossom Nodim. There is Teresa Oibe Ame. And then there is MME song, Misodi. 
maybe there is no man in the list on the lists, yeah, because the men are very stingy. <laughs> so these women, they call me and then they say, ah, are you, what are you doing in Nigeria? You're supposed to be teaching somewhere now. What, what is wrong? I said, flight tickets. And they'll be like, okay, what date are you traveling? Then the next morning, check your email. And then I have a flight ticket in my email box, and I'm off. So other young people are there thinking my father is paying for all these things. My father doesn't know where I am. Trust me. He doesn't know. And this continues because the more I get this support from these women, the more I want to do. So currently, I'm teaching African Studies literature on Chino Achebe, Flora Wapa, and Gugi Watiyongo at the University of Manipur in India. And I am an assistant professor, whether you agree or not. I have, I have, I have a letter from the VC of the university signed by the registrar and the VC, and my father has it enlarged in our house. And I teach free of charge. So if you want people to come and teach you, please call us. We will come anywhere. Kano, Kat, we will come with our money. We are rich. In Jesus' name. Thank you.